So Mallory's been driving my car, and she was like, you know, I should start driving mine, because mine has problems. Remember there's problems it was having? It still has them. So she's like, I should drive mine. I'm like, okay. But she couldn't get her back license plate on, and we were going to take it over to the Kia dealership to get them to put it on. Got in the car, and uh, we're only in it for a second. It started smelling really bad, and then smoke started just pouring out from underneath the hood. Do you have any idea what this is? No. Oh, well, good. We called a few people, and um, they said to just try the car again. So we got in it, and this time everything seems to be fine for right now. But it was crazy. So we got in the car, and it was, it was making this sound. It was like, I don't know. I can't replicate. It sounded like there was a cat stuck in the engine. Yeah, I can't really replicate the sound. But all of a sudden, there was like smoke coming out from under the, the hood, and we were like, oh, crap. And then we, we stopped the car and went around to the other side and opened the hood, and it was like, <sighs> smoke poured out. It wasn't bad. It wasn't like... It was on fire. It was just a little bit. It was a lot. But then again, I've never seen a car smoke, so it was a lot, <laughs> was a lot to me. You don't watch NASCAR. <laughs> no, I don't watch NASCAR. Don't don't stereotype me for being... I'm just saying, I have and I've seen it. People in Wisconsin watch NASCAR, don't they? Yes. Yeah, that's a big thing in the South, but I, just, I, was, I could never get into it. It was just not for me, but I know a lot of people in Wisconsin like I anyway. I like the road races. I don't like the circle ones. Austin had an Xbox NASCAR game one time, and we played the whatever the, whatever the 500 lap one is. It was it was real. Daytona. They, yeah, the Daytona 500, and it was actual 500 laps. It was boring. Right now, because we got the car running, we're actually going to go to a mechanic. It always seems that when you have car problems and you take it to a mechanic, the car never acts up when it's around the mechanic. And then you're just kind of like, well, it, it does this thing, and then they have to go based off that. Because my car's still having problems, but apparently um, the way I explained it to my dad and the way he explained it to the mechanic who worked on my car was wrong. Uh, because he was under the assumption that I had told him that the car wouldn't even, like, start, whereas the car was starting. It just doesn't stay started. It just doesn't stay started. And I apparently explained it in a different way to him, which was bad on my part. But then he explained it to the the uh, mechanic incorrectly as well. So then the mechanic replaced a part that didn't need replacing or something. I don't know. But I have a new part, whatever that part is, neutral switch or whatever. Anyway, right now we're on our way over to a Kia dealership because Mal drives a Kia. Look, it's a Kia. It's a Kia. K -k -k Kia. Anyway, <clears throat> um, we're on the way to the Kia service center, not for the car actually, not for this problem. Um, Mallory needs to get her uh, her license put on, and it would be just a simple operation to just you know put them on. But something's wrong, and her it's back always been wrong. and it's something back there is broken where it doesn't attach right. So we're taking it to the dealership who can hopefully put her tags on. That's that's. But then the car started smoking. And then the car started smoking. That that's how all this started in the first place. Um, so we're going to the dealership now. Hopefully can, they can get the tags put on. And then also maybe they can look at the car and, and see if there's a problem they can fix. So, Kia dealership, here we come. Gentlemen, behold the Kia dealership. Duh. My name is Steve. $520. That's not what we paid. Thank God. That was, uh, that was what we would have to pay. In order to fix it, now we got the uh, we got the license plate on. I think that was like they didn't charge us for that. They charged us six bucks for that. No, they didn't because yeah, they did. No, that was the that was tax. Oh. <laughs> they didn't charge us for that. Although to be fair, they charged us fifty dollars to run the diagnostics tool on it, which um, personally I think is high. And also, they did not tell us they were charging us, and they didn't charge they didn't tell us any amount. Prior to, to doing that, it was just, it was just like we'll run the diagnostics to on it, and then it was like this is fifty dollars, and they told us that after they had oh, done it. Only. So, I mean, maybe we should have asked, but I just assumed that they would tell us before, you know, things like that. Happen. Things like that happen, but that's what you're dealing with anyway. The timing belt is shot. We apparently need a new timing belt. And the part is $75, and the labor is $300. And then there was a few other odds and ends things 
And between parts and labor, it came out to uh, $511. Yeah, that's a little bit much. Uh, the 55 that we paid today to run the, the, the agnostic, the Lots diagnostic tool, will be deducted from the 521 if we choose to come back here. But personally, now I don't know a whole lot about vehicles, but I believe that you know the nearly $400 worth of labor might be a bit high. I mean, just maybe. I mean, dealerships, at least from what I understand, charge you an arm and a leg, and it's cheaper to go to a mechanic. Um, you know, we're not real familiar with this area, but we've got friends who uh, live here or who have lived here in the past. So uh, I'm going to be calling them up and seeing what their recommendations are for someone in the area because a timing belt is apparently a pretty major issue and will need replaced ASAP, at least if she hopes to drive her car and not my car. After all the hubbub with the car, we um, we switched cars at the apartment and came back out the shop. I just had to show this. Check this out. It's called Gugino's Mama's Minestrone Soup, but it has like a zombie cow on here. Do you see that? And it says eat chicken, so it reminds me of the Chick-fil-A cow. But like, it, it's look at that. That's frightening. It makes me not want to buy this product. My mother, for whatever reason, and I told her not to, bought us a bunch of jalapenos. You get all these jalapenos for a buck at a, at a farmer's market, sort of. It was a flea market. Whenever we were at the flea market in Charleston. Because I she knows I like jalapenos. And I do. I just don't like 50 jalapenos. I don't need 50 jalapenos. Mallory won't need them at all. But we decided that we should probably use some of them so it doesn't feel like we wasted the dollar. So I'm cutting some up and going to put them on a pizza that we're making. That's Mallory's half. She's being boring. I decided I was going to try uh, Thomas's uh, pizza that he had the other night whenever we met him over at Zaz. He had pineapple and jalapeno. I was very perplexed. I'd never seen that before, so I'm going to try that out. Well, I'll be honest. I think I might have possibly overdone it with the jalapenos. When I was cutting them up, like, I thought that I, I didn't have enough, so I was like, oh, I just need another one, maybe another one, and then, oh man. I like think the entire thing is flooded with jalapenos. I'm not really used to that. I like jalapenos and I like hot stuff, but um, this might be just a little much. I don't know. Thomas, you're the one that ate this uh, jalapenos and pineapple. What do you think? Does that look delicious or does it look like a little much? Is it better to have like 80% pineapple and 20% jalapeno? You have to fill me in because uh, I'm a noob when it comes to pineapple jalapeno pizza. I'm willing to try it, but I think... Uh, I think I might have overdone it. I mean, in my personal opinion, that is some serious jalapeno action. I'm not used to that many on there. It's not bad, but I don't think I get it. Like, it's it's such a strange combination. What's weird, though, is that the jalapenos don't taste all that hot on the pizza. I don't know if the pineapple somehow counter counteracts that or what, but um, it doesn't taste all that hot. Anyway, as usual, we're going to uh, finish up dinner, and we're actually going to go ahead and end it here with a wonderful, wonderful episode of King of the Hill. King of the Hill is not going to be available on Netflix very long. I think uh, it ends in like another week or two, so we're going to watch King of the Hill while it's still on Netflix. Anyway, uh, that's it for today, so let's meet back tomorrow. There's, there's, a, there's two words left. You know what they... Pineapple. For the record, you should not put five entire jalapenos on a pizza. Those... <laughs> I cried. <laughs>